So now we're basically done editing the audio. In case you want to adjust the volumes of the audio tracks, you can simply use um, the gain sliders here to make them louder or less loud. Or you can amplify individual parts by selecting them using Effect Amplify. However, I don't need to amplify this or anything. I'm satisfied with the volumes as they are. So I'm going to uh, export this to an MP3 file. Save as type MP3 file and choose options to set up the uh, quality you want. I tend to use 256 kilobit per second. So let's save that. And now it will export it. The exported file uh, will combine these two tracks into one track. So if you were to open this file back into Audacity, you won't get the two separate audio tracks, but you get one combined. So if you should um, want to do further editing at a later date, make sure that you save the original uh, files as well. I usually don't, but in case you want to. Okay, now that we've saved that, we can go back to Virtual Dub Mod and add the uh, MP3 file we just created to the stream list. We want to disable the uh, original AVI audio stream so that the uh, final video will only have our new combined file. Since we already saved the file as mp3 uh, we don't need to do anything else with that, we can just leave it as is. And I always move this one down. I don't think there's any need to do that, but I like to do it anyway. Probably a sign that I have OCD or something. Okay. That's essentially all the editing. Now all we need to do is save the result. For this we go to File, Save As, very surprising that. And then simply go to the folder where you want to save your files. Video mode you can choose Fast Recompress because we're not using any filters or anything. Um, if you do use filters in Virtual Dub Mod, you need to use full processing, but if you're just uh, compressing the video with some different audio, like what I'm doing, you can just use Fast Recompress. Then we need to choose what compression codec to use. And we will use Exvid. Now I'm sure some of you are going to say, you should use um, this other codec, which is much better, and you get much smaller files with better quality or whatever. I don't care. D uh, hard disk space is cheap. Exvid is easy to use and easy to get, so I use Exvid. Configure, um, choose the configure button to set up the settings for the compression. I leave most of the settings at their default. What is important though is that we want to do two pass encoding which means uh, we need to do the first pass and the second pass. Virtual Dub Mod does not have any built-in ability to do that, so we're going to need to set up two different jobs, one to uh, do the first pass and one to do the second pass. Of course, uh, first we're going to set up the first pass, so now we select encoding type, two pass, first pass. You can leave the rest the same. At this point you cannot change the bitrate. We'll change the bitrate uh, when we get to the second pass. So it doesn't matter what you set here, uh, what you set for the bitrate, it doesn't apply to the first pass at all. So OK and OK. Now we're going to select don't run this job now because we're doing two passes. We want to uh, run them both at the same time or one after the other. But we want to set up both of them before we run them, so that's why we're going to uh, use this 
And we're going to save this one as pass1.avi. Doesn't matter, that file, you won't need it, you can delete it afterwards. But you need to save it as something. I want to replace the existing one because I don't need that one. Once again we go to File, Save As. Now change the settings for the compression codec again. Configure. Now we select 2 pass, second pass. At this point you can choose your uh, target bitrate or you can go with target size. I choose to set the bitrate instead of the size and I set it at 6000 which gives me a very good quality. Yes, it does mean the files get quite big. If you use a, an older game like a DOS game uh, you won't need to use such a high setting for a final unity. I used only 1000. And anyway, this is the maximum bitrate. The, the whole video won't necessarily use this bitrate. But the higher you set it, the better the quality, but also the larger the file. That's basically the rule. So, OK. And OK. And we're going to save that one under the final file name, which in this case is EOA. 34. I've been using that uh, file name quite a bit, and of course uh, you may have guessed that EOA stands for End of Ages. So, save it. Now it didn't do anything because we selected the uh, Don't Run This Job Now option. What it did do, however, is add both the first and the second pass to Job Control. So we go to File, Job Control, and we can see that both of our jobs, the pass 1 and the second pass going to the uh, EOA34 file, are here and are waiting. So let's start both of them. At this point it will start compressing the uh, video files and that will take quite a long time depending on uh, how fast your computer is. Now I won't subject you to having to wait for that in this video, so I'll pause uh, my recording now and come back when this is done. And it's done! Or wasn't that quick? Well, actually, it took 23 minutes, so not that quick. It just seemed quick to you. Anyway, you don't really need to stay around to uh, watch this or anything if you're doing this. You can just go do something else or whatever. So as you can see the actual amount of work you need to do isn't that high even if you do need to uh, wait quite a long time for the compression. This is one of the main reasons why I don't use um, another codec. Because even though X264 would probably give me better quality it would also probably take even longer to encode. Well, what's left? Not an awful lot. Actually, nothing at all. You can check here now and we see that we have our new video file. The final file size is 470 megabytes, which um, is quite big, but compared to the uh, 11 gigabytes that we started with, it's quite reasonable. Welcome back. There we go. Our video file. We discovered that we can lower this door by um, uh, adding weights here. Now all you need to do is upload it to YouTube and you're done. Also you're left here with pass1 and video.pass files. These two files are remnants of the uh, or first pass of encoding and they're no longer needed now that the second pass is done so you can just delete them. And that's it! I hope you've gained an insight into how you can uh, create Let's Plays with the best possible video and audio quality. If you have any more questions just ask them in the comments and if I have time and if I know the answer, I will answer them. 
Goodbye.